Well, thanks so much, Ivy. So the first thing I want to say to all of you in full transparency is that it is a true honor to be here today offering you anything that I can to help you as you navigate these strange, uncertain, crazy, challenging times. It is such a huge honor, not only because I love what I do and I love to serve and support others, but also because I am obsessed with costumes and I've been obsessed with costumes for about 17 years and I've collected them. I've got them all over in my house. I throw costume parties and I actually use it in my coaching. So when Ivy reached out to me, it couldn't have been a, you know, a more um, synchronistic opportunity. So you guys mean a lot to me and I respect you and your work so much. And it's a very personal and special thing for me to be here with you today. So I just wanted to let you know upfront that I'm, I'm in awe of all of you and I think you're all incredible. And in fact, because I just so happened to integrate costumes with my coaching in some circumstances, you guys are at a huge advantage to transform anything in your life, internally, externally. And some of what I'll be talking about today is actually going to dive into and touch on and teach you how to leverage what you already know uh, via your expertise with designing costumes and, um, and being in that world and how to adapt that to your life in a seamless way so that there's not all of this struggle or um, kind of biting the bullet or all of the huffing and puffing that can come along with trying to you know, improve oneself or improve one's life, especially during these times. So um, we're gonna cover a lot of ground. And just to set the stage here, um, there's absolutely no expectation from on my side for, for you guys. So you're welcome to participate at whatever level feels comfortable for you. I always encourage my groups <laughs> to play at a level that feels a little bit stretchy for them, I call it. So kind of outside of your comfort zone, just a little bit, but by all means, feel free to participate or not participate. Just listen in, turn on your video, don't turn on your video. Whatever is comfortable for you is totally fine with me. So that's, I just wanted to clarify that on the outset. Um, and we will be doing a few activities or I will be inviting you to do some reflection and share with the group around some themes that tend to be a little bit personal. And although that can feel, um, that can trigger a lot of things for us, it also can create a depth of growth and a depth of learning that doesn't really happen when we stay more reserved or kind of in our corner. So I want to invite you all to participate and share at the level that even if it's uncomfortable for you, that's totally okay. That's kind of why we're doing all of this is to learn new things, try new things, and to show up in a way where we're actually getting the most out of these kinds of experiences and trainings. So feel free to throw your hand up or put your answers in the chat and I'll guide you, of course, I'm gonna be facilitating along the way, but I, I do want to welcome you to, to maybe get a little uncomfortable today when you, you may not typically be uh, inclined to do so. Um, let's see here. Okay, so to set the stage a little bit, I'll share just a little bit about who I am and what I do, and then kind of a little bit of context about where we're headed, and then we're just going to go ahead and, and dive in. Um, so, and I'm looking at my notes over here in case you're wondering what I'm glancing at. Um, so I'm a life, career, and purpose coach, and I absolutely love what I do. I feel so incredibly fortunate to have built a business and built an enormous community of clients around the world who are all transforming their lives and creating what I call their hell yes life. So my whole philosophy is around creating the life that we're here to thrive in living. So to do and learn and be whatever, whatever our highest potentiality is. And that doesn't necessarily mean like, I'm not a success coach. I'm not like one of the stand on the stage and kind of beat my chest kinds of coaches at all. I just happen to be obsessed with thriving, with feeling great, with having wonderful experiences in life, with creating whatever we want and ultimately experiencing life at a level that is full of joy and fulfillment and authentic confidence and um, anything else that we should desire. So that's what I do professionally is I help people to go from, well, typically, typically people find me when they're stuck, unfulfilled, confused, 
particularly professionally, but not always. And they have this sense that they're not living at the capacity that they would like to. There, something is off or everything is off. Their career feels out of alignment. Their relationships might feel like a disaster. They might be, um, you know, adrenal fatigue from working too much. They might feel isolated, especially during, you know, these times, isolated, depressed, anxious, etc. So overall, they're in a space where they've kind of tried everything they know how, they've read the books, they've gone to workshops, and they don't know what to do next. So over the course of the past seven years, I have kind of leveraged my background in psychology and research in studying what it is that actually contributes to human thriving and human fulfillment and well-being. And long story short, <laughs> I've invested thousands and thousands of hours in discovering what it is that exactly really actually helps people to go from that place to a place where they're, they're fired up, they're lit up, they're hell yes about their life. So with a lot of research, a lot of patients and hundreds and hundreds of clients, I've discovered or created or kind of both a, a set of tools and modalities, and I've created a program from that that goes from start to finish, walks people through in a custom capacity, walks them through that whole process, and by the end of it, they're, they look back and they, they have completely transformed, total 180. So that's where I'm coming from. Um, I lead several communities in my, my sphere, my professional sphere. I do coach trainings. I facilitate a community of women who have been clients of mine throughout the years. Um, I do a lot of teaching. I love teaching. I love sharing these, these concepts and this information that because there's a lot of noise out there, right? In the personal development world, you go on YouTube and you type in like confidence or, you know, self-esteem and there's like all, all kinds of stuff pops up and not to speak poorly of the self-development world or devalue that at all. But um, in my experience <laughs> in doing my due diligence, there are some very specific things that are helpful and the rest is kind of fluff. So it's my passion to share the things that I'll be sharing with you today because I want to save you time. First of all, there's no reason for you to read 12 books when you can just, you know, do, take one workshop and learn all of this. Um, and then also so that you can start to implement it into your life. And the kind of overall idea and intention I have with all of you today is to support you and empower you to feel however you want to feel and be whoever you want to be in your life, regardless of what happens, regardless of what's happening around us. And I know that's, that's pretty lofty because this pandemic has been, has been brutal and has, it came out of nowhere and not only pulled the rug out from underneath us, but also shifted and changed everything else in our paradigm. So I'm not wanting to oversimplify or just um, shine away the, you know, the icky parts of what's happening here. I'm going to teach all of you how to literally create your reality from the inside out so that re regardless of what happens, you always have a choice about how you are experiencing your life. Always, always, always. So we're going to cover a lot of ground. I've got a lot of information to share. Um, as Ivy mentioned, I did create a workbook for all of you. So you don't have to follow along in that unless it's helpful for you. And um, some people find that helpful. Some people find it distracting. So you're welcome to just like listen, journal, take notes. You're welcome to use the workbook. I'm going to be walking us through everything as we go um, in tandem. So feel free to reference that. It's yours, obviously, to have afterward as well as a reference um, to help you to integrate and remember these themes and some questions in there to help you practice afterward as well. Let's see if there's anything else. Um, I think that covers it. Okay. So today, when Ivy reached out to me and we were having a conversation around some of the common challenges in this community, and also as I was reading your responses from the questionnaire, and thank you, whoever filled that out, I appreciate you. Uh, when we were talking about all of this, and also in my larger context of like, so working with so many clients over the past several months as the pandemic has unfolded, I really put my thinking cap on <laughs> and I did a lot of um, kind of meditating on this and really searching within myself to find what I feel are the core, like I distilled so much stuff down into these core principles that I'll be sharing with you today. 
Um, and it's going to be a lot. So if you have questions as we move along, please just unmute yourself. Feel free to chime in and ask. That's totally okay with me. Or you can put it in the chat and I'll um, attend to it. So I know I just want to acknowledge that this is a lot of information, but I'm I'm all about extreme value. I'm all about showing up and providing as much as I can, hopefully without compromising the actual, like um, the value of it in terms of integration. But so yeah, let me know if you have questions. I love questions. I'm, I'm happy to answer them uh, in the moment if possible, if it's kind of a quick clarification question, or we also will have 30 minutes of Q&A at the tail end of this workshop. So um, jot your questions down and then I'll have more time to dive in to them with you at the end. And I think that covers details and a little bit about me. Do you guys have any questions before we get started? Does that sound okay to everybody? Okay. All right, I'm looking at photos and names. I'm, I don't have any live. I live in Mexico, I live on the ocean just south of um, Puerto Vallarta and so sometimes you may hear some roosters in the background and we also have a storm rolling in pretty soon but I've got my backup power so we should be good but just to let you know if you hear jungle sounds that's that's why. <laughs> cool all right so today we're going to be exploring four themes. We're going to be progressing through default mode, which is what where most of us are at on kind of any given day, not to say that you all haven't done personal development or you're not actively working on yourselves or your lives in no way, shape or form am I insinuating that. Um, so when I refer to default mode, it's more to speak to our kind of typical day to day, our typical inner world and our typical outer world. And the idea here is that we're going to go on a journey from default mode into tuning into desire. So what would make life even more amazing than it is right now? And then once we clarify what that would be like for you or what that would be for you, then I'm going to be sharing some of the more informational magic tricks and tools that are directly relatable to the, um, film and movies and theater, directly related to costume, directly related to design. So we're going to be shifting into how to occupy the director's seat in your life, to use that analogy, and then to design your life according to those desires and to being the director in your life. So I'm using some fun analogies because it just lends itself so well with this community. And that's the journey that we're going to go on. And again, kind of the key outcome of this is that you feel like you have some really fun new ways to shift from anything that's holding you back or any lower vibration that you may be feeling emotionally, um, insecurity, anxiety, depression, confusion, et cetera, and how to shift out of that and into how you do want to feel and in a better quality of life. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just screen share the, work, uh, the workbook here and I'll probably do a little bit of both screen share and, um, and back on video, but since most of you have your photos here, I think I'll just go ahead and screen share because I, um, if there are live faces in front of me, I like to be live in front of each other, but I think right now we'll be fine with that. Okay, let's talk about it. So we'll do a question. I'll field a question to kind of kick things off here and you're welcome to reply in the chat. You're also welcome to take yourself off of video or off of um, still frame and, and raise your hand or raise your hand in the chat. Um, and please do, if you feel comfortable, please do respond to these questions because it does help me to get a sense and gauge where all of you are at in your experience right now, um, just in day-to-day -day life. So first question is, uh, would you like to improve the quality of your life by at least 25%, whatever 25% means to you? Would it be helpful? Is that something that would be optimal for you? Would you like to improve your life to that degree? Okay. Next question is, would you like to experience more positivity, joy, fulfillment, confidence, and or fun in your life? Because I can't see you, I'm going to assume, just take a stab, a wild guess that the answer is yes there. Who doesn't want more fun? Um, and then the third question is, 
would you like to be, and pardon my language, um, would you like to be unfuckwithable? So able to stay centered while maintaining a state of, I can handle it regardless of circumstances. That word is not my word. It comes from a book called The Code of the Extraordinary Mind, which I have all of my clients read when they start working with me. And the author, Vision, uh, I think he's the one who coined that term. And as um, edgy as it is, I think that it's pretty well descriptive of how we really want to feel in any given situation or, or in the day, day to day, right? It'd be so nice to be, um, to be, able, be able to navigate life without being affected by circumstances to the degree that it's like pulling us off of off course so yay oh, okay yay i'm seeing the chat thanks everybody awesome yeah everyone's like yes of course <laughs> awesome okay sorry i have so many things in front of me here so i'm gonna toggle back and forth between the chat cool yay all right so these three these three aspects these three changes upgrades up levels that's what we're what we're going to be like that's our north star for the conversation today and and afterward so before we go into how to create that, I, I need to pull the, the veil off of three lies that for sure get in the way and get between us and thriving. And the, this isn't one of those um, BuzzFeed like three major things, you know, one of those, I no offense to anyone that works with BuzzFeed, <laughs> um, but this is legit stuff here. This is like again, thousands of hours of research and a lot, a lot, a lot of teaching and practice around this. So these three things are honestly what I consider to be like, if you just focus on these three areas and, and learn and realize the lies that are happening in these three areas, it's radically transformative. All right. So I love myth busting too, by the way, I'm pretty, I'm pretty counterculture. So, um, so the three major lies that keep you from driving. Number one, your experience and quality of life are the direct result of external factors. Your experience and quality of life are the direct result of external factors. I'll unpack that just a little bit. So oftentimes, and this is totally normal, this is absolutely a common thing. So if this resonates with you or this is something that you can relate with, um, no shame, no worries at all, because honestly, this is what we are this is what we're kind of taught to believe around how things work in our experience of life. So no, no shame at all there. So what we're taught, how we're taught to interact with the world and taught to think of ourselves in context of the world around us is that there's a stimulus, there's an outside world that's the stimulus, things happen around us, people, events, situations, etc. And in this illusory cause and effect directionality, when something happens externally, we're affected and we have a reaction. So a lot of us think, until we know differently, a lot of us think that whatever we're feeling on the inside, whatever we're thinking in our minds, whatever the, the thoughts, beliefs, stories are in our minds, whatever's happening in our inner world, we think that it's the cause is external. We think that the, the stimulus is outside of us and therefore we are at the whim. We're at the whim of whatever is happening outside of us. And it turns out that's a, that's a lie. <laughs> it's a huge lie. And I'm going to um, bust that lie in a few minutes here. The second lie is that your inner world is an accurate depiction of reality. So a lot of us also move through life thinking that whatever, whatever our lens of the world is, whatever our beliefs or our assumptions are, our stories are about the world, that that's how it must be because that's what we perceive it as. So we've got, you know, seven and a half billion people walking around on planet Earth thinking that their, whatever's going on in their inner world is not only real for them, but that's kind of the way things are. So not to go into this too much, I don't want to go into a diatribe, but this is how like opposing viewpoints can cause so much friction. This is how arguments, you know, occur between two people who otherwise get along. There's a, um, there's an assumption that the inner world and the stories in the inner world are real and that they are the accurate depiction of reality. That's also a lie, which I'll get to in a second. And the third one, um, and this one, is like, I have a lot of fun with this one. We're gonna have a lot of fun with this one. The third one is that your personality, mood, disposition, and ability are permanent. AKA you can't change it or it's really difficult to change. 
So um, raise your hand or feel free to just type in the chat like me if you've, um, if you've ever felt like or you've tried to change something about yourself or you've tried to uh, shift a habit or you've tried to overcome this thing and it just feels like you're stuck. Like it's just not it's not, um, it's not working. <laughs> it's not happening. The shift isn't happening that you'd like to happen. I'd love to see how many of you have had that experience. It's really common. I'd be surprised if anybody hasn't had that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. It feels like pulling teeth sometimes. It's like, yeah, sure. We can, we can say to ourselves, I want to eat better. I want to exercise. Like that would be great. You know, I want to be more positive. I want to be more um, extroverted or whatever. And it, despite our best efforts, right, and not due to a lack of effort, we, um, we just can't seem to make the thing happen. So I just want to dispel the myth, the lie that, that you're stuck the way that you are. Um, that might sound obvious to some of you or like, like brand new news to, to, to others of you. But again, everything that I'm presenting today is, is rooted in science. It's evidence-based. It has been replicated. There are studies, like all of this stuff is is actual fact. And what they're finding in recent years that I'm so excited about, because this is something I studied way back at Berkeley, is around our ability to completely change ourselves, to completely transform our personalities, to completely up-level, alter, become different versions of ourselves than we were before. Totally possible. Um, and I have a bone to pick with the personality test industry because without going into that too much, um, the personality test industry has done a really good job of convincing everybody that the way that you, the way, what your results are when you take a personality test is who you are for the most part, right? With a um, plus or minus degree of however much percent, but they've, they've done a great job, like job interviews, for example, um, really big on personality tests, uh, schools, universities, etc. And come to find out, <laughs> first of all, personality tests are not very well substantiated. There's not a lot of um, rep uh, replicable, repeated studies and results that actually, over time in a longitudinal capacity, show that personality is um, congruent over time. It's just not. And personality tests, the design oftentimes is flawed kind of at the outset as well. So I'm going into this because I want all of you to know that what we've been told about our ourselves, our personalities, is a bunch of bullshit, <laughs> if I'm being honest. It really is. Um, and in fact, it's the opposite. We are malleable. We have some, uh, our brains do this amazing thing. It's neuroplasticity. We're able to change. We're, a we're able to become whoever we want to be. And so I want to dispel, dispel that myth right out the gate here because oftentimes it's these lies, or all three of these, um, oftentimes it's these lies. They're assumptions, right? They're kind of like, these are our operating system because this is what we've been told. This is what, these are the, this is the impression that we've gotten during our time here on earth, or maybe this has directly been our conditioning from, you know, outside factors. So we don't know any better. So, but we have these like assumptions going on in our minds that, oh, okay, like I'm feeling bad about myself because I, I like, I'm feeling inadequate because I'm not as successful as this other person. So that, and that must be real because it feels real. And then and I and I can't change or it's going to be really hard to change right so all three levels of these lies really mess us up and the good news is that they're lies so if you even if you just like cut this part out of the workbook and stuck it in your pocket and like referred to it every day and reminded yourself that these are these are myths that alone would help you transform your life. You would start to experience life in a very, very um, different way, a much, uh, usually a, a lot lighter, a much lighter capacity. Um, but give yourselves permission to just let those go. Uh, and I will, I'm gonna follow up with Ivy after this class that occurred to me earlier today that I wanna follow up with some reading recommendations, some you know research to support and substantiate all of this in case you guys are curious. So I'll, um, I'll send that over. Okay, so now that we know what's, uh, what's been getting in our way and or some of the lies that we've been fed, let's talk about how to, what to do instead, right? 
Um, so in fact, we don't even really need to do anything about undoing the lies. It's simply being aware of them is enough. Like being aware that the earth is not flat, pretty handy, right? We don't have to like go out and prove it to ourselves and march around the planet to prove that. We just were like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Okay, cool. So um, there's nothing like intentionally focused that you need to do to dispel those lies. The best way to to shift an untruth in our operating system in our minds is to replace it with an updated operating system, an updated set of beliefs or understandings of the world. So where we're headed here is shifting from the default role in the film of our life, again, analogy. Um, so that default role, if, if any of those three lies are playing out, that default role might have us feeling pretty passive if we're being honest, like, you know, I feel like crap. I feel anxious because like the world is falling apart around us. Um, I feel inadequate. I feel insecure because other people are more successful than me or someone else got the gig in a really, you know, on a project that I really wanted to be on. And that must mean that I'm, you know, something's wrong with me or I'm not good enough or what have you. And, and so then we have the emotional experience of all of that. And that's a roller coaster in and of itself. So the default, um, shifting from the default role of the film in our life where it's like passive and at the whim, shifting from that to consciously identifying, okay, how do I want to show up? What do I want to feel? What do I want to be different in my life? And then proactively assuming the role in the director's seat of our life, like getting out of that like passive bystander who's watching the film and like getting into writing the film, directing the film, and designing what we want our life to be like that's where the magic happens and that's where we actually we kind of break out of the matrix if you will and we start to realize that we can be do and have anything that we want which might sound really frivolous and lofty right now and I don't want it to sound that way I am aware that that there are an enormous amount of pressures and conditions and factors happening right now that are making it really really challenging to tap into thrive mode again that's why i'm here <laughs> that's why i'm presenting this stuff okay so let's do a sharing activity i've just talked quite a bit here so i'm going to let you guys do some sharing and, and help me get to know you a bit um, again feel free to share at the level that you feel comfortable or a little bit uncomfortable and I know that because you all may work together that some of this stuff might be pretty sensitive. So choose something that might not be, you know, that revelatory or choose something that is because oftentimes when we, when we're the ones to raise our hands in class and like ask the question or share the thing, there's always somebody else who's experiencing it too. So, all right. So default settings, let's, uh, let's shine the flashlight on some default settings here. So what are one or two of your biggest challenges or discontentments right now and or since quarantine. So discontentments, um, it's kind of self-evident, but that's essentially like, what's bumming you out? What's suboptimal? What's not, not feeling great for you? What are one or two biggest of your biggest challenges or discontentments? Another way to explore that is what's not working in your experience of life? Go ahead and take 30 seconds to tune into this. Um, the more meaningful of a share you can have, even if you don't put it in the chat and it's just in your journal, the more, the more real for, the, for you this is, the more you're gonna get out of it. So go ahead and give some thought to that and, and type it in the chat. Or if you wanna come on screen and vocalize it, that would be awesome too. And this could be related to anything. This can be anything at all. No judgment at all. All right, one to two of your biggest challenges or discontentments. What keeps you up at night? Are you finding yourself you know, beating yourself up, being hard on yourself? Any themes around that? Seeing two responses, thank you. Beautiful, yeah, keep them coming guys.
biggest challenges. Great, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, those, those internal, the way, like, being hard on ourselves, like, feel free to share anything around that, like, I feel dot, 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 or I beat myself up for blah, 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 or I really wish I could just be confident and, like, walk into the room and get hired right away, or, you know, anything, anything at all. Yeah, great, great, great. Thanks, you guys. Okay. Feel free to continue putting your responses in the chat. I'm gonna go ahead and um, read through the, the ones that are publicly shared here. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay, a lot of insecurity in our line of work and everyone brings a different talent to the job. How do we get rid of that worry that we are all not good enough? Yeah, okay, so kind of a supply and demand challenge around there's this amazing talent pool and not very many projects, right? Things have been pared down 90%, 95% from what I understand. I lived in Hollywood for a long time, so I still have friends there that kind of update me on the state of affairs there and yeah. So that's a great question. How do we get rid of that worry that we're all not good enough? Okay. Sadness for young people, children included about the uncertain economic future. Yep, okay. So feeling some concern around that, I'm guessing some, oh gosh, like, <clears throat> yeah, what the future could hold and how that could impact or limit the younger, the younger-lings, right? Okay. Okay. Thank you for your share, private share. Unwavering belief in yourself. Okay, so I, I'm, I think what I'm hearing there is the challenge is believing in yourself no matter what. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, April. Um, focusing, wasting this gift of extra time. Mm -hmm. I hear that a lot, uh, a lot in my community and in my clients <clears throat> where there's this desire to, you know, use this time wisely and be productive and, you know, like be active, but just not being able to tap into that or tune into that, especially in like a sustainable way. Not being able to see family, realizing our country was not as enlightened as I originally thought. Shannon, thank you for mentioning that. There's a huge wake up happening around the country, around the world right now, but around the country and you're not alone <clears throat> in that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Wondering if it's safe to go back to work, difficult to plan your life and we may be locked down for months, right? <clears throat> Yeah, not a lot of predictability or it doesn't feel like things are very predictable there. Not being able to be in your creative industry. These are great, you guys, thank you. Frustration about how the pandemic is being handled, right? Feeling a loss of hope about the country to overcome catastrophes. Yeah, these are awesome. Yep, safety, huge. Being isolated, yeah, yep, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah. Uh huh. And then kind of the interpersonal dynamics of, of work as well, whether it's within, um, within with your colleagues or just working with a crew that there may be personality dynamics that are less than favorable, things like that, just like dealing with people, right? Humans. <laughs> Again, I lived in Hollywood for a few years, so I get it. <laughs> um, what is the new normal? future. Yeah, these are awesome. Thank you so much, everybody, for sharing, sharing these. Yeah, uncertainty, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of fear, a lot of um, shock and awe, maybe not even awe, a lot of shock, uh, realizing that things are not what we thought they were, or things are not going to be what they were before. Um, in, in a sense, kind of a form of trauma, like a collective trauma that might be happening with, with some of that as well. Yeah, 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 great. And then, you know, how that's affecting you and how you feel in the job market, if you will. Like, what does this mean for me? Am I going to have work? What do I do? Well, I don't have work. How do I, what do I do to be productive? Like, yes, these are, these are so, so real and so human. And again, I 
talked to dozens and dozens and dozens of people every week, every month um, since, you know, for years before the pandemic. But since the pandemic, I've had this influx, of course, of people who are like, ah. Um, so this is very normal and very human to be feeling um, these challenges. And I want to acknowledge that. And I also want to be mindful in acknowledging that anything that we cover from here forward, anything that I say or share from here forward is in no way, shape or form downplaying or dismissing or normalizing your experience at all. I understand that this is a traumatic era that we're in and we're all experiencing it to the best of our ability with what we know, how we know how. So I want to clarify that, that yes, I'm going to be talking about how to, how to shift out of all of those things and how to let, how to, what to do about this. But I'm, I'm not trying to say, oh, just, you know, brush yourself off and, you know, go about your day. Cause I realize that it's not, it, that's just not what's, what's going on. Okay. So with all due respect to all of the challenges that we're, that, you know, the world is facing that you individually are facing, we're still going to be talking about how to create a, a life of thriving amidst all of this. Okay, so now that we shared challenges, and thank you again, everybody, that was, um, I appreciate your, your vulnerability and your honesty so much with all of that. So let's talk about something a little more uplifting here. I'm going to invite you to, it's kind of, this might feel kind of like an imagination exercise, but you guys work in film, so maybe that's helpful. So what I would love is for you to check in with yourself and ask yourself, what are one or two of your biggest desires right now? So in other words, if you could change anything, if you could wave a realistic magic wand. So I like to put realistic in front of that because still in the realm of reality, but like best case scenario. And you woke up next Monday and those changes were taking place. What would you, what would that, what would they be? <laughs> what, what do you desire? If you could snap your fingers, wave a realistic magic wand, what would be different next Monday? If some, for somehow, some way you woke up and it was like, bing. So feel free to share in the chat, take um, 30 seconds to really tune in with yourself and see like, if you're being honest with yourself like, deeply, what would be amazing? What would be different? It might be, it might be personal, might be global, might be related to your job, might be related to your quality of life. What are your two biggest desires or longings? Feel free to share in the chat and then um, don't worry about these three questions below. I'll, I'll get to those in a moment. Beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Great. Biggest desires. Come on, guys. I know <laughs> you've got to have longings <laughs> during this, this era. Yeah. Mm hmm Okay. Oh, nice. And I want to mention here too, that it can feel there's a, there's almost always, there's a resistance inside of us when we ask ourselves, you know, Oh, what would I love? Well, I would love this, but that's not possible. And like something pops up and shuts it right down. Right. There's that resistance of like, well, sure. It'd be great to be a millionaire. But so if you feel that resistance, that's a good sign because that means that you it's something you actually desire so give your resistance permission to just go play outside for the next hour hour or so as we continue with the workshop what would you love what would be awesome for you what would be wonderful best case scenario is still in the realm of reality <laughs> nice yeah great yep 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 okay Nice. Right. What else, you guys? What else would be wonderful for you? One or two things that, man, if they were happening, would just be like, woo, so much better. Beautiful. Okay. I'm going to start kind of reading these back, and then we're going to go into these next three questions. These are awesome. Um, 
So let's see. Maintain a program of adequate sleep and exercise. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, okay. That was a huge, I can relate with that one. <laughs> that was a huge one for me for years. Um, yep, okay. Designing a film, beautiful. Working abroad, okay. Not feeling mom guilt when I go back to work in the new year. Ivy, thank you. Oh my gosh, I have, I have several women in my, um, of clients of mine in my community right now who are either pregnant or just had um, babies and similar, there's a lot of conversation around mom guilt. So you're, you're definitely not alone. Um, okay, some specifics there and a private share, great. Solid money portfolio. Work on a project with a great crew, no abuse. Get on a plane for vacation, <laughs> yeah. Yes to that, okay. Free of student loan debt. Great, buy a home, design a TV show or film. Love it, that pays well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Financial peace, get organized, yeah, personal items, okay. Yeah, that's always a great feeling when things are organized. Beautiful, these are great, you guys. Keep them coming, um, keep digging inside of yourselves and especially after this workshop, like. I promise you, if you actually spend time with this workbook and go through this stuff consistently, you'll start to notice shifts. So part of that is continuing to dig deeper and ask yourself, okay, what do I really want though? Like, what do I really, 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 really want? But these are great. So the next set of follow-up questions to that is where we get to learn more about ourselves. You get to learn more about yourself. I get to learn more about you. Um, and we get to find out why we want this thing or these things so so much right why we have this so much desire around these aspects or these these things that we're sharing so these questions feel free to please um type these in the chat as well so if this were to be taking place so you wake up next monday realistic magic wand happens and the thing is occurring or has happened or is in motion what would be what would be different just what would be different for you in your life? What impact would it have on you, on your life, on your lifestyle? What would that do for you? So what is it about this that, would, that you find meaningful? What would it do for you if this happened? And the third question, if nothing else, please do respond to the third, that third question. What would that do for you? <clears throat> Take a few moments to ponder that. I'm going to add, actually, I'll add a little um, specification to that last question too. What would that do for you? How would you, how would you feel? How would you feel if this was happening? <laughs> like, and how would that be different than how you feel today? Right? Yeah, yeah, right. Feel lighter, feel excited. Mm -hmm. Feeling of stability. Yeah, invigorated, ooh, yeah, good word, yeah. What else would it do for you? If this was happening, if you can just like put your imagination hat on. Yeah, elated to share creativity with others, beautiful, yeah. Thank you. What else would it do for you? So this is, I mean, if we're digging deep here, right, and, and we really want this, or it would be amazing if it happened, if we found a genie that gave us two wishes <laughs> and these two things could happen on, by Monday, right, we wake up, um, what, what would it do for us? Why would it be so incredible? Feel free to keep posting in the chat here. These are awesome. This is great. Yeah. To, to use a personal share um, while you guys are thinking about this. So I lived in Hollywood for four years up in, up in the hills. And I, this was when I was kind of starting my coaching career, building my business. And I had always had this desire to travel the world. 
always had this desire, but had no clue. It seemed like as possible as flying to Pluto, <laughs> basically, to, um, to create a business <laughs> that would allow for me to travel and do what I love and serve people in a powerful way. I, that sounded insane to me. But I hired a coach, started working with a coach, um, multiple coaches throughout the years. But I started, my, I started to see that the way that I had been thinking about that as being like impossible or like I could never create that, like other people can, but something's wrong with me. I started to, I, I started to see that maybe, 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 maybe I could. And I just that like little glimmer of hope. So I got really in touch with my desires, just like you guys are doing here. And um, and long story very, very short, I eventually, four years later, <laughs> put everything into the storage and started traveling the world and working on my business. And now I live, I'm looking at the beach right now in Mexico. And it's like, I pinch myself every day. I'm like, how, what? <laughs> this is crazy. And I'm not saying this to brag or to in any way, shape or form, you know, put myself on a pedestal at all. In fact, it's the opposite. It's to normalize that our dreams are possible, not in this like lofty way, but that in clarifying what it is that we really want and like admitting to ourselves what we really want and the desire that we feel around that, we're allowing that part of us to come through and that's the seedling. That's the beginning stage. It can't happen if we don't let these dreams and desires come through. It can't happen if we're constantly telling ourselves it's impossible or something's wrong with us or, you know, if we're skeptics or if we're cynics or whatever. No, we, we need to and we get to get really, really in touch with not only what we desire and what would be amazing, but why, right? What would it do for us? Why would that be amazing for us? So little little personal share there. It looks like, oh, great, some more comments. Okay, beautiful. Yeah, so a lot of this, um, a lot of the themes here are around the, un the lack of safety and certainty as a result of how things are right now. And then the other kind of side of this is, I would love to feel more secure. I would love to feel secure as a person and also secure in the aspects and in context of the world around me. Yeah, oh, we give you joy to do what you love and enjoy working with creative and kind people, plus the security of having a paycheck. Yeah, yeah, beautiful, awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna keep moving here for the sake of time, but this is something that we're kind of, I don't know, I don't wanna sound like a conspiracy theorist, you guys, but we're kind of programmed <laughs> to think that like our, these things that we would love to happen it's like ridiculous or it's not possible, especially during a pandemic, like that's crazy. And so there's, a, again, probably a lot of internal resistance coming up, especially around like some of those bigger, more intimate um, dreams and desires that you have. And I, for what it's worth, as your coach of the hour, I invite you to just see what's possible. Just trust me that if you allow these dreams and desires to come through, there will become a path, there will become a way, which is what we're segueing into. But I just, I really, really want to emphasize, I used to think all this was like banana sandwiches. I'm like, just get out of here, you know, like, no way. But it's now I know because I live it every day personally and I've helped hundreds of other people to do it too. So I know now that the resistance and those like naysaying internal gremlins, I call them gremlins, um, the naysayers and or maybe even the people in our lives that may be like, oh, you know, like, well, that's ridiculous. Why would you want to do that? Um, it's just misinformation, right? It's just part of those three lies that we talked about earlier. So if nothing else, uh, please give yourselves permission to, to get clear on what would be amazing for you. Because if, if we don't get clear on that, then we're, again, we're just going to be defaulting through life. We're just going to be on like whatever cruise control we're on. Um, which isn't, you know, <laughs> it's okay, it's fine, but it's not uh, maybe desire oriented. Okay, so, oh, Shannon, seeking truth, living testament to what I'm saying. Ooh, I'm going to bookmark that in my mind and circle back to you when we do Q&A because I'm really, or you can put it in the chat. Super curious to know like in what capacity you're speaking um, to right there. Okay, beautiful. Thank you so much, you guys, for sharing your, your desires with me. Um, I remember just one more anecdote here. I remember seven years ago, maybe I went to a conference by LAX. It was like the Marriott or something like that. And it was facilitated by this woman, Mary Morrissey, who's the like 
she's a legend in the coaching world. She's like up there with Bob Proctor. She's one of the like the elders of the coaching world. And her conference was called the Dream Builder, Dream Builder Experience or something. It was like a three-day thing. And I remember sitting, <laughs> sitting there and like, it's all about this kind of stuff about like, what would you love to be happening if money were no issue or like age and time? And I was like, like this is some fantasy <laughs> bologna sandwiches, but okay, I'm going to play along. Um, and honestly, that workshop was, that was the thing that shifted the entire trajectory of my life. So um, again, all of this is possible, but I also want to let you know that if you're feeling like this is, you know, hmm, sure fun, um, that's totally normal too. I'm not going to take it personally. <laughs> Okay, so now that we've identified the lies, we've identified what default mode looks like in terms of challenges, um, and we've talked about desires and longings, the things that we do want. Let's talk about how to make it happen, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop some info on you guys right now, and you may be familiar with this stuff because thankfully it is becoming more popular in the kind of social media, you know, space, Instagram and whatnot. Um, but again, there's a ton of noise out there. So um, even if you have seen some of this stuff or looked into it, or maybe you practice it, this may be um, a clarification or it might just be a good reminder. Um, and for those of you who haven't really explored this stuff at all, um, great. This is, this is some of the most important information you'll ever come across. Okay. So being the director of your life. So I know all of you are designers. I don't, I'm not trying to extrapolate that you have any desire to, you know, actually be a director in the world. But when it comes to life, it's really freaking important that we're the director. It's like super important so that we're not just pushed and pulled around at the whim of society or peers or what people think we should do or our parents think we should do, blah, 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 which most of us are until some point. Um, so it's, it's, it's a night and day difference in terms of our quality of life, in terms of our enjoyment of life, in terms of our fulfillment and satisfaction. When we're in the director's seat, when we give ourselves permission to say, you know what, <laughs> I'm done caring what everybody else thinks. Like, I'm gonna figure out what I want. I'm gonna become responsible for making it happen, period. The most empowering decision we could ever make. One of them, at least. So. I'm going to talk a little bit about some kind of nerdy, coachy stuff here, but all of it is in service of helping you to kind of, you know, put the pieces together in terms of why this is also important. So locus of control is essentially, do we believe that we are in control of our thoughts, emotions, feelings, experience, or do we believe that the external world is the cause of our experience in life. So internal or external locus of control. This is so, so powerful. So, so, so powerful. And it requires a lot of humility and a lot of vulnerability and courage. It's not easy to, not always easy to live an empowered, accountable life in the director's chair of our lives. But it is, it is far more, it's, it's far and beyond the experience of living life at default or at, in the victim's chair, if you will. So locus of control is that differentiation between I'm, I get to like, I'm the orchestrator of what's going on in here versus like, it's the world's fault or cause. Secondly, victim accountable. So this also game changing. Am I, do I feel like a victim in life? Do I feel like life is happening to me? Do I attribute my moods, my problems, my this, that, or the other two external factors? Do I surrender my power or my agency in life? Or am I accountable? Do I take full responsibility for my experience of life and how I show up in 100% or in most cases and scenarios? That's the, like, if you will, the come to Jesus question. That's the... I don't know another analogy for it, but that is the question that will change your life. If you just put sticky notes all over your house and reminders in your phone and you just check in with yourself day to day to day, am I, oh, was I just being a victim or accountable? Was I just in a victim mindset or was I in an accountable mindset? That, that's where things start to shift in your favor if, 
if you can catch it and step into accountability. Accountability, this is a term that's thrown around a lot. So to clarify what I'm speaking to when I, when I talk about accountability. So this is when we are responsible for who we are, how we interpret life, so inner world, and how we interact with the world around us and how we interact with life. So it's full choice, right? It's a full, it's a decision to say, you know what? My external world could be a shit show and that's not optimal, but I'm going to take responsibility for myself and I'm going to take my responsibility for my life and say, you know what? If it's to be, it's up to me. Okay, what am I going to do here in the midst of this situation? What can I do to shift my my mindset, my emotional barometer, my interpretation of the event. How can I see this as an opportunity instead of a, a boundary or a challenge or a wall? So this is where coaching in the coaching world traditionally really like digs its claws in um, because this is where we start to realize that the change resides in here, not out there. Things shift when we shift. Um, there's a quote I put in here that uh, when we change the way we look at things, the things we look at change. So another way to describe this is coming from an inside out understanding of the world, an inside out experience of the world versus an outside in experience of the world. This changes everything, I promise you. Because what's true is that we always have choice. We always, always, always have a choice in the matter as to how we're interpreting something, the thoughts that are happening in our head and whether we decide to believe them or not, our reactions and responses and behaviors, and our participation as a result of all of that. We get to choose. And this is where we get to pull out the, and we all, most of us have this like part of us that's like, hmm, like, no, I'm totally justified in being frustrated or like pissed off or sad or like it's, you know, because this whole, everything's happening and it's, it's not my fault, you know, the, the victim mode. So just so you all know, like, it's totally normal. The victim gremlins are going to come out and they're going to try to like, you know, stomp their feet and, and convince us that it's the world, it's not us. But again, lies, right? It's, it's not true. So to play with this a little bit, and this is something I invite all of you to do every day, all the time, if possible, is to check in with the, the stories that are happening in your consciousness, in your mind, and they're happening all the time at a thousand miles an hour, usually, for most of us, at least, um, checking in with our default storylines or interpretations of what's happening around us. So, you know, let me think of a kind of frivolous example. Somebody in our household um, leaves the refrigerator door open all the time and like doesn't put their clothes away, right? So if we're in victim mode, we're gonna be like, you know, man, this, you know, you didn't do this. I'm so tired of you, blah, 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 you know, and get into a fit and a fury about it because our story is that because they're doing this, we get to get upset about it. Like it's their fault. Versus if we step into accountability mode, and again, this is, it's, it's practice guys. But if we step into accountability mode, we get to choose how many, pardon my language, but we get to choose how many fucks we give about the refrigerator door being open or the clothes being everywhere. Ultimately, if we can just take that little pause and interrupt that default victim thought we're having and just kind of stand back and watch our thoughts and ask ourselves like, is that an empowering thought? Is that an empowering thought? Is that something that's serving me? Is that something that's gonna get me closer to what I desire in life? And without judging our thoughts, because um, thoughts are just happening. They're just popping out of nowhere, coming into our heads and you know, playing themselves out based on the conditioning that we've had throughout life. So don't take your thoughts personally. In fact, please don't believe everything you think and take a moment to just zoom out as often as possible. See what you're thinking. Just check it out. What am I thinking right now? Hmm. You know, Todd's a jerk. Brenda should have put her clothes away. You know, I'm no good. I'm, I'm not going to ever get a great job. Like all this stuff, right. That, that just comes in. It's just neural impulses. It's just, and not to like downplay that because it's, 
we have the most incredible mechanism in the universe up here in our brains, but, and it's just, you know, what comes in goes back out. So if we're programmed to be in victim mode, if we're programmed to think that we're not agents in our lives, um, then that's, those are the kinds of thoughts we're going to have. It's just, it's very simple. It's a one-to-one -one thing. So if you find that your thinking is very victim oriented, or you find that your thinking is kind of complaining or fear, fear based, like it's, again, it's human and normal that you would be experiencing a lot of anxiety and uncertainty and fear during these times. And also it's an option. You don't have to, you don't have to feel afraid and anxious. You don't have to. And that's, that's like huge. You can step back, notice that you're having thoughts that are triggering anxiety. Oh my gosh, what if I don't get a job? Oh my gosh, the kids, what if the world blows up in five years? Oh my goodness, what if the food runs out? We go into some kind of a famine. Like all of this stuff day in, day out is like spinning and we're in the river as opposed to being on the bank of the river and watching that stuff go by and saying, okay, I see that I'm having those thoughts, but I don't have to co-sign them. I don't have to jump into the river. I can kind of wait for whatever current that might support me or be the right speed or whatever, AKA an empowering thought, accountable thought. And I can like get on that, but I can like surf it instead of being like overwhelmed by it. So I know this is a lot, you guys, I'm like trying to unpack 15 years of neuroscience in, in one workshop, but um, this is huge. This is huge. This is key. Simply knowing that you have, an, you have a choice about feeling anxious or not and just asking yourself, like, do I, is this anxiety doing anything for me? Do I need to feel anxious right now? I know that things are uncertain. I know that right now I may or may not have a job. I know that things are what they are politically, but do I need to feel anxious as a result, right? Do I need to co-sign whatever line of thinking is triggering the emotional experience of anxiety? So all of this is to say that when we live from an inside out stance perspective, takes practice, but when we're able to realize that we don't have to co-sign, or I, sometimes I say we don't have to get on the dance floor with every single thought we have, and we can just stand back and watch, and then we can decide, what do I want, what do I want to think? What would be helpful right now instead of harmful? That's when we start to realize that, oh my gosh, it almost feels like becoming a Jedi, if I'm being honest. Like We realize that the events around us are happening, but they have no meaning we're the ones that are creating the meaning about the events around us. We're interpreting the world in the way that we're interpreting it, which means that we can, we can feel however we want. We can feel good about things, bad about things, neutral. Um, that initial stimulus of feeling anxious, sure, that's human, but we don't need to let that ride us for every day, day in, day out. We can take a step back and say, oh yeah, that doesn't serve me. I hate being anxious. It feels like shit. I'm going to choose to not do that right now. I'm going to choose to like focus on something I'm grateful for or um, just, just sit back and watch my thoughts instead of agreeing with all of them. Um, and that's, this is where we become the directors of our lives. We become not only the screenwriters, if you will, but also we regain our agency in our lives. We regain our ability to choose and create as opposed to being victims. <laughs> we regain, it's like we, we're back on the throne. <laughs> we can direct how things um, play out in externally because we're able, to, we're able to be conscious and in choice about how things are playing out internally. And it's a lot of responsibility. So if you don't want to be responsible for your life or if you're not ready yet to take full accountability, that's okay too. That's where you are. That's where I was for a really long time until I started figuring my stuff out. Thank God. Um, but there can be a lot of resistance to this because we're so used to being in victim mode. We're so used to being in it's ego really, but I won't go into that right now, but we're so used to feeling justified in our stories, in our emotions, in our this, that, and the other. So it's, I just want to, you know, let you know that it's normal and it's, you can do whatever you want with all of this. And whenever you're ready to feel and start taking responsibility or maybe become even more responsible or accountable than you are, 
that's when all of this starts to like, you know, ah. <laughs> the clouds start to part and things really start to shift internally and then therefore externally. Okay. So a little bit more on this. We're going to do a share in a moment. Thanks for <laughs> listening in, you guys. I know this is a lot. <clears throat> okay. So thought creates, thought creates experience in the moment. That is your golden ticket to freedom. That means that if whatever you're thinking is what you're going to be experiencing. If you're thinking thoughts that trigger anxiety, you're going to feel anxious emotions. If you're thinking thoughts that are abundant or thoughts that are benevolent or thoughts that are neutral, you're going to have a corresponding emotion and also corresponding experience of the world. It's like putting different colored lenses on in a way. Um, so I'm going to kind of cruise through this, but I find this to be really helpful too, that if we really check in with ourselves, most of the time, if we're feeling anxious or depressed or insecure or insignificant, or I call them the low vibration emotions. So if we're feeling low vibe, it's usually because our thinking is somewhere in the future or somewhere in the past. So when we're thinking about the past, we have, oh my God, regret. Did I do it right? I should have done that. I wasted my time. Oh my God, I can't believe I said that thing at the meeting. What an idiot. Like we start to spin out into like negative evaluation of self, um, et cetera, et cetera. And if we go in that direction with our past based, if we're thinking about the past and we're having those stories, we in the moment feel crappy. We feel low vibe because we're focusing on a non-existent situation that a story that we're telling ourselves, it's a memory, right? It doesn't exist. We can't reach out and touch the past. And same with the future. So if we're like thinking about the future, what could go wrong, what might be horrible, you know, all of these things, like, sure, these things may happen. It may happen that the apocalypse continues to just do a nosedive. It's possible, right? But if we're obsessing, dwelling, thinking about that <clears throat> and focusing on that, we're completely, we don't have any control over that situation. We can't control the future. We can't, we can, we can control and set ourselves up optimally and plan well, but there are no guarantees. We can't control the future. So whenever we're focusing on something that's out of our control, we feel, we feel very disempowered and very crappy. So anxiety is typically the experience of thinking about future and not, and um, thinking about the future with those uh, lenses, those lenses of like pessimism. So just check in with yourself, right? <clears throat> if, are, am I in the present moment, which is the only thing I can control? <laughs> or am I in the illusory parallel universe of the past or the future? Um, and if I'm in either one of those, am I thinking about them in a constructive way? Nope, probably not. Um, if I need to be thinking about the past or the future, which is rare, how can I think about it in a more constructive way? All right, so we're gonna do a share and then we're gonna start uh, wrapping out here and I'll do Q and A at the half hour. Okay, so this exercise is something that, um, it's really simple, but it's also one of the most powerful exercises personally that I've um, had in my tool uh, box for probably about 10 years now. Um, and one that I use often with my clients and so I'm going to share it with you and you're welcome to take this out into the world or, you know, use this on your own. Um, in a way it's, it's kind of an extraction or, uh, an interpretation of the, the work of Byron Katie. Uh, she's, she's incredible. And she has this modality called the work that helps us shift from any line of negative thinking into like basically like freedom. So this is kind of based on that, but, um, like distilled down. So here's the activity and I will invite all of you to share in the, in the chat um, if, you, if you will. All right, so refer back, to, refer back to one of the challenges that you shared or the discontentments that you shared at the beginning of, or earlier on in the, the workshop here. So, cho and choose the one that feels the most like crappy. <laughs> the one that feels disempowering or maybe tends to be on your mind in a loop. Um, so recall that and then 
feel into it for a moment. Like feel what it feels like when that is occupying your conscious space. How does that affect you? I'll give you 15, 20 seconds to feel into that. So what is your experience when you focus on that thought? How do you feel? How do you show up? How do you treat yourself? How do you treat other people? Usually there's a pretty noticeable feeling state around it. Especially this day and age, some of the things that are out of our control, like the pandemic and politics and et cetera, et cetera. If we focus on that, oh man, <laughs> I can feel it right now. It's like, eh. When you're ready, go ahead and share in the chat. How do you, what's your experience like when that thought is occupying your mind, when that discontentment or that longing or that challenge is occupying? Yeah, great. Irritated. Oh my God, that's, uh, yeah, irritated. Mm hmm. For me, an impatient is something that happens in my world. Um, how do you show up? How do you treat yourselves? How do you treat each other? Maybe your partner, if, if this thought or this challenge is in your mind space. How do you feel about life? How do you feel about what's possible? Oh, well said. Yeah, it casts a shadow over everything. Woof. Mm -hmm. That's a great description. Yeah. Yeah, there's like a surrender of like, forget about it. Like, fine. And just like wanting to give up, kind of. Letting go. Overwhelmed. Every yeah, overwhelmed with everything you need to do. Everything you don't know. Everything you failed at. Yeah. Less, less patience with yourself and the people around you. Totally. Yeah. Anxious, scared. Afraid I'll have to go to a country that's more accepting of who I am. Hard to plan for the future. A lot of uncertainty, apprehension. Yeah. These are great. Thanks so much for sharing, you guys. Really dig in. Like, how, how does this affect you? How does that challenge, that discontentment, how else does it affect you? What other ways? How's your, how's your sleep? How's your mm, health when this challenge is at front and center? I know when I'm focusing on something future or past that is out of my control in a way that I, that matters a lot to me, like, I, I used to, I was like spin out. I'd be like laying in bed and just be like, crap, like, yeah. I was like just anxious trying to go to sleep at like two in the morning. Impatient, mm -hmm. nervous, thinking about moving out of the country to have a better life. Yeah, yeah. I can obviously relate to that one. I live in, I moved to Mexico. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much. I, I invite you, let's do like 10 more seconds. Like ask yourselves, how else does this affect, am I affected by this? Like, how do I show up? How do I feel when I'm focusing on the challenges or the discontentments? Great, okay, April, it sounds like you have, you know what to do that helps you feel better. I get exercise, that's awesome. Feel paralyzed, yeah. Yeah, totally. Paralyzed is a, is a, it's such a great descriptor, I think. Well, at least for me, cause like, it's that sense of being completely out of control. Like, I can't do anything about this. Great, all right. Yeah, great. Thanks so much for, for those shares. Um, again, I invite you to continue exploring all of this outside of the call. Um, if we were in like a weekend workshop, we'd go really deep into here, but uh, for the sake of time. Um, <clears throat> okay, so to kind of zoom out high level, what we just did is we noticed and reflected on 
the challenge or discontentment as well as the correlating experience that happens when we think about the challenge or discontentment. I don't know if my hands are the right direction, but so the, okay, thinking about frustrating, challenging, scary thought, felt experience, right? Like, doo doo, it happens. So <clears throat> let's flip that and we're gonna buoy things back up here because I know that it feels like, doesn't feel good to be there. So this is the part that I, I just, I really love to play with. <clears throat> and I invite you to, sometimes it requires that we step into a bit of our imaginative ability again, because it can feel um, like those lies are so patterned in us that it feel like it's hard to let go, but bear with me, just see what we can do here. So now, <clears throat> excuse me, and feel free to close your eyes if you're, if you're sitting um, or somewhere where you can close your eyes. So now let's tune in with what your experience would be like without that thought, without the thought or the story around that challenge, without that discontentment, with if it like literally wasn't even there. There's just like nothing there. Take 15 or 20 seconds and I'm going to just be quiet this time to imagine hmm, if it just wasn't there. I'm just going to check out what that would be like. What would it be like for you without a thought? Somehow there was just like a thought removal apparatus that just bloop, <laughs> out of there. And any tendrils related to the, that thought to the challenge or the discontentment. Like, so if those just, just wasn't there. Hakuna Matata, <laughs> Hakuna Matata Shannon, yes, love it. <laughs> Yeah, so now, yeah, feel free to share. Please, please, please share at any, any length here. Um, what would your experience be like? What, what was that like to just like, without it there? And see if you can hold that container. See if you can hold that space of like, oh, it's not even there. How would you feel? How would you show up? What emotions would you feel? How would you treat yourself? Calm and more focused, less fear, less doubt. Okay, so Lynn, to, to, I'm gonna pull that one out a little bit more. If it wasn't there, what would you have more of? If you had less fear, less doubt, what would be there instead? Be free to enjoy the smallest pleasures in life. Yeah, less worry. Liberated, oh yeah, liberated. I feel that one in my body, yeah. What would liberated feel like for you, Sarah, if you wanna elaborate on that? What is liberated like? How does that show up? Great. Okay, productive, more excited, yeah, future-oriented, and see the possibilities, these are great, yeah. Go ahead with your plans, working toward better environment. Yay, yeah. What else, what else, what else? If this thought, that challenge, that discontentment just wasn't even in the internal landscape at all. Oh. <laughs> what else would be different? How would you show up? What would your experience be like? More time to focus on the future, okay. Be more present. Yes. Yeah, interesting. Time to focus on the future and more presence. Like more um, choice, it sounds like, you know. Not let others' negativity affect us. Ooh, Jacqueline, tell me more. Yeah, without the thought. Yeah, 
So maybe in kind of inverting that, um, Jacqueline, and I'll pull that one out as well. So if you're not letting others' negativity affect you, what are you feeling instead? Racking up the accomplishments. Okay, cool. Yeah, these are great. How, how about emotionally, physiologically? What would it be like? How would you feel without this thought, without the challenge or discontentment occupying that space? Like, what would be different in your, whew, like your headspace, but also like just how life feels for you day to day? We'll do just maybe 20, 30 more seconds of sharing around this and then we'll, we'll scoot forward. These are great. I appreciate all of you for, for sharing. Yeah. If we're happy internally, the negative can roll off our back. That's, that's what we're talking about, Jacqueline. Yeah. Life would be easier, friendlier, lighter. Lighter, happier. Yeah. Oh, totally. And if you can physically feel the difference between what we did a moment ago with like focusing on the challenge and then right now without it being there, if you feel a difference in real time right now, um, go ahead and just type yes into the chat. If you like noticed that like, oh, I actually feel lighter right now than I did when I was focusing on the thing. <laughs> Endorphins all the time. Yes, yes, please. <laughs> yeah, very different experience. Yeah, yes, awesome. Lighter, mm-hmm, yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Physically lighter, more energy, totally. Yeah, it's like, ah, oh. like it, there's this feeling of like relaxation and in a way it's also like a feeling of having bandwidth for the beauty of life. And you know, <laughs> that's what we're here to experience. Beautiful, thank you so much for sharing um, and Continue to tune into to this uh, anytime um, after this workshop. So I'm going to zoom out and hopefully share something here that that you will take with you after this workshop, like forever and ever and ever. So what we just did is we really, in real time, had the experience of what happens when we believe or focus on the challenge, our interpretation of the challenge, the discontentment, and how that feels for us when we're focusing or believing that. And in contrast, we had the experience of what happens when we just don't give it any weight. We're like, what? okay, not there. And everything that comes up around that, that lightness, that, that fluidity, the buoyancy, the empowerment, right? Yeah. So there's no big secret here really, but there's one big truth. And that is that whatever you're thinking, whatever you're believing is what's creating your experience. It's not the thing itself. It's not, it's not the external thing. And I know this sounds crazy, but we just proved that, right? With the thought, we feel this way. Without the thought, we feel this way. And you get to choose. Nobody says you have to f dwell on the challenge or the thought in the way that makes you feel the way you feel, right? You don't have to do that. You don't, you just don't have to. You can be aware, okay, I've got this, um, yes, thing that I'm working toward or that I would like to make progress on, or yes, there is a pandemic happening, but you don't have to take on the flood of negative low vibe stuff that comes with that. You can choose to acknowledge it and then you can choose to create a different meaning or a different interpretation that shifts you into that lighter state. Because the thing is the thing regardless of how you feel about it, right? The pandemic is happening regardless of whether I'm stressed about it or whether I accept it and I just do my best to like thrive amidst it. It's still gonna do its thing, unfortunately, right? So this is where the real power, this is where you really get to come back into your director's seat and you get to make a decision. How do I wanna feel? 
do I want to feel? Do I feel like I need to feel? Am I attached to my anxiety? Am I attached to my fear? Do I feel like I'm obligated to feel shitty because of the shitty world outside? Or am I willing to, am I willing to actually be more conscientious and conscious of realizing like, oh, everything I experience is coming from the way I'm thinking about things. Oh, okay. Well, I can still be aware of what's happening and not assign so much negativity, low vibe stuff to it. I can create a different reality for myself through choosing to interpret things differently. So, and it's not all that complex either. I know I'm like sharing so much right now because I want to give you as much as I can, but really all it comes down to is just be just mindfulness, witnessing your thoughts. If you find that it's not serving you, it's, if it's causing stress, low vibe emotions, just let it pass. It's just the thought. It's not real. It's probably just something that's been programmed in, if I'm being honest. So let's talk about being the designer of your life. Now that we know like how to be in the director seat and the power of thought and all of this, let's talk about being the designer. So all of you are designers, which is awesome. You all are pros at this already. So you can adapt this to life um, and, and have fun with it in ways that, you know, other, other people who are not designers, it takes them a lot of practice, uh, which is fine. But so designing inherently in that word has intentionality built into it, right? We don't just design by default. Like we, when we design something, we're like real specific about what we're designing, the parameters involved. I know all of you do a tremendous amount of research and training and studying um, and, you know, creating research Bibles or creating portfolios and doing, you do so much to become as intentional as possible when you design something, when you design a costume, when you design a, you know, period piece sets or whatever. So this is what you get to do with your life. And part of the designing of your life is stepping into that, that accountability responsibility mode and being willing to say, you know what, I'm just not going to be stressed anymore. Like I know everything's crazy right now, but I can choose to not be stressed about it. That's up to me. It's not, it's not the situation. It's the way that I'm interpreting it. So that's part of it. And then the other part of designing our lives um, is this model. And I kind of already went over this, so I'll probably cruise through it, but there's, we're, we're taught that in order to, in order to be happy, in order to be content, fulfilled, etc., we have to first do the thing, have the thing, and then we can be happy, right? So once I get the promotion, once I can travel the world, once I get the job, once I um, feel more certain about my finances, once I have a savings, then I'll be at peace, then I'll be happy, then I can be whatever, X, Y, Z. So that's what we've been taught to think is that it's again, external creating internal. But as we just went through, that's bullshit. <laughs> so it's actually the other way around. So by being the state that we want to be, by being happy, by just choosing, okay, I'm going to be grateful and fulfilled today. I'm going to do my best. I'm going to focus on the positive. I'm going to take care of myself. I'm going to trust that I can handle whatever comes my way right? So by being in that state of mind, state of body, then we act from that place, right? So however we're thinking and feeling, we typically behave from that place. And I think a couple of you mentioned, like, how do you treat other people when you're stressed out or focused on the challenge? Well, we're kind of, <laughs> we can be kind of crummy to other people, right? So if we're embodying intentionally designing how we want to feel and who we want to be, intentionally, then we behave from that place. And when we behave from that place, when we show up, which is the do part of it, then we start doing things that are in alignment with our, with how we want to be. So then we'll start, maybe we do start writing the screenplay that we've always wanted to, because we just want to. Maybe we do start to research places to, you know, that excite us for when we can travel, we, we do go there. Maybe we start thinking creatively about how, who we know in our network and who they might know that could use help with something that we have a skill set that can help them for. So we start thinking expansively. We start, we start showing up more expansively, more creative, more, more proactively. 
And then we start to have, just by nature of showing up this way, we start to have the things that we want in our life. But it's not because we're focusing on the end goal and telling ourselves we have to have that first. It's because we're choosing to be first in that vibration and in, in that, I hate to use that word because it's kind of woo-woo, but, but it's because we're consciously designing <laughs> our reality and our life from the director's seat that then things follow in alignment with it. And oftentimes way better than we could have even imagined. Um, and, and if not, right, if, if catastrophes do enter our path, which they probably will, we're in a place to, a much better place to be able to handle that than if we were in that like low vibration state of disempowerment and stress and anxiety and cowering. So the being part of this is huge. It's everything really. And um, recent, in the past couple of years, I've been building out a couple of modalities. Um, one is intentional identity and the other is, like I said before, it's actually costume coaching. <laughs> so <laughs> intentional identity is, um, to sum it up, it's the act of, the act of be getting clear about who we want to be and showing up that way. Like, we don't, we're, we don't have to be attached to the person we were five minutes ago or even a day ago. We can completely switch the script. And I love that you're all in the entertainment and film biz because you see it every single day. You see people step from, you know, George into character, you know, Frank or whatever. Um, you see people do this all the time, especially with method acting, right? Where it's like, they're so in it. Well, this might sound terrifying, but it's actually great. We can do that. We can do that anytime. We can decide, you know what? I don't have to be afraid anymore. Okay. I can like, I'm going to be, I'm just going to be more carefree. I'm going to be more like, you know, and so it's really helpful to identify who is out there in the world, character, fictional or non-fictional person that we admire, that we would love to be more like, that has behaviors or tends, you know, seems to have like mindsets that, that we really, um, we would like <laughs> to have and to start intentionally creating our persona and, and who we are. And then again, like behaving in alignment with that. And pretty soon we start to become that way. And this happens in, I guess, like a quote unquote negative direction when we're thinking negative thoughts about ourselves, surrounding ourselves with negative people, um, you know, just becoming the victim to our habits. So we see this happen a lot in, in that direction, but there's not a lot of talk about like intentional identity in the other direction around, oh, okay, like I'm gonna be more, so for me, just being transparent, for me, it's Lady Gaga and Bjork. <laughs> like, they are my everything. And that's um, my costume obsession, right? So I've, looked at them as role models for so long and how they move in the world, how they show up, how many fucks they give about what people think, you know, things like that. And I, not in this like obsessive way, but more in like a reverent way of like, oh yeah, I can, I can do that. If they can do that, I can do that. So think about who inspires you, how you'd like to be, how you'd like to show up. And um, here's some questions to help you do that. Um, and really, Get in touch with that intentional identity uh, as opposed to the default identity that might be you know happening and then with costume design so <laughs> when i started telling people that i had developed this modality called costume coaching they <laughs> usually i get like this kind of dual pronged response where it's like whoa like that's so cool and then they'll like take a pause and they're like that makes so much sense <laughs> i'm like i know so the general idea here is that like over time, I started to notice both with myself and people that um, I would costume up for events or whatnot, or at my parties, um, I would notice that I would watch my friends or people that I knew to be like reserved or maybe not super social or whatever. And throughout the night, they would become like parts of themselves would come forward that I had never seen before. And I realized, oh my God, this is, a, this is an amazing tool for personal development because it kind of creates this excuse for people. As you all know this, I'm preaching to the choir literally right now, but it provides this, um, this container and this expressive piece to, that helps people explore that part of themselves that they don't usually. 
so you guys do this professionally. You can, you can do this with yourself. You can, whether it's literal costume or whether it's like that intentional identity um, kind of costume of, of being, way of being, and step into that. You know, sometimes it's helpful to, there's a book called The Alter Ego Effect that talks a lot about this stuff where we can step into an alter ego, like Beyonce's is Sasha Fierce and like a lot of, a lot of uh, very professional and high level actors and performers actually have an alter ego to help them. You probably know this as well. Um, and so you can do this too. And by stepping into that alter ego, by stepping into and utilizing costume, utilizing persona and character and re referencing that, if we want to be more lighthearted, if we want to be more confident, if we want to be more I don't know, Zen about the apocalypse, we can. No one says we can't. And it's really helpful to play with costume, again, literal or figurative, in dropping into that. And pretty soon we'll notice that if we're embodying that character, if we're embodying that costume, then our thoughts start to shift into how that, that character would think. We start behaving like that and pretty soon, usually it's very quickly, we start to become intentional. We start to become who we want to become. And that's the place from which we create the reality that serves us and also the life that we want to live. So if we're all here to thrive, let's, <laughs> let's start getting out of our own way, right? Let's, let's let go of the lies. Let's let go of the disempowerment and the victimhood. Let's take a load off. Let's stop taking ourselves so damn seriously and still be proactive about what matters to us, but from a place of choice instead of a place of unconscious obligation. And I think that wraps us out. Okay, so <laughs> let's do, I would love if you guys are open to coming on cam, but if not, that's fine too. Um, I would love to hear, let's use the chat. And if you feel like being on screen, that's great too. But um, I would love to hear your examples of who you would like to, hmm, like someone you admire or a way of being that you admire or a way that you'd like to shift into, or maybe something you'd like to let go of. And this other person really like represents that for you. Um, so any of that, anything that you'd like to bring into your intentional identity Anybody that embodies that, represents that. Oh, someone has a Bjork. Yeah, yeah, yay, love Bjork. Thanks, April, me too. Um, yeah, so I know I just like gave you guys a massive download of information and, and stuff to try on. Um, so hopefully this is landing. I'd love to hear your shares around, okay, well, if I could wave that realistic magic wand, who would I be? How would I show up? What would that look like? And feel free to put that in the chat. And then I am here for Q&A as well. So love the idea of an alter ego. Yay, yeah. OK, so while well, the rest of you are hopefully chatting your chats in. Um, so yes, the book, The Alter Ego Effect, is great. Um, his name is Dan Harmon. Todd, sorry, Todd Herman. Um, and yeah, it's awesome. It's all research-based. He gives a lot of examples. He, he works with a lot of, um, you know, Olympic athletes and super, super high performers, probably a lot of folks that you guys are around. And he, like, his approach is, is the alter ego effect, he calls it. Um, and it works wonders. It's really cool. Um, and then another, <laughs> nice, Lake Governor Ann Richards from Texas, or Mark Twain. Love that. All right. Yeah. Um, another book that just came out that I'm, I was, I'm, so I'm a huge nerd uh, bookworm. I have like over a thousand personal development related books in my collection. I'm constantly reading because, and I love um, giving my clients resources all the time that are like fit to their specific journey. Um, but there's a book that just came out called Personality Isn't Permanent. And it's so good. I think it might be the I think it might be the best personal development book ever written, if I'm being honest, and I'm saying a lot. He, it's so well researched, it's so liberating, uh, and he talks about all of this stuff that I've been covering. Like I've been teaching this for a long time, like quite a while, and I found out about um, oh, what is his name, Ben Benjamin Hardy. I found out about his research and his book like eight months ago, and I was like, what? Somebody's actually going to start 
talking about this. So that's a great book too, if you guys want to check it out. Michelle Obama, yeah. Jacqueline, what is it about Michelle Obama that you resonate with? And Shannon and Amanda, uh, what is it about Brene Brown that you ladies resonate with or admire? Yeah, those are great. Cool. And any other, um, there we go, yeah, in, intelligence, diplomacy, and grace. Cool. Joan Jett, hell yeah. <laughs> yes, outlier. Beautiful. So yeah, as you start to think about who you admire, who inspires you, who you, not, not like who do you want to be like necessarily, but like what are the characteristics that you would like to add to your intentional identity or your, your way of being that, that are important to you and that would make a big difference for you and would help you feel the way you want to feel and be in that feeling state around like so the Monday morning question I asked you guys earlier, um, and if you have a question, by the way, I'm just gonna keep sharing stuff. <laughs> if you have a question, just type in the chat question and then I'll, you know, we can pop you off camera or answer, uh, do Q and A in the chat too. Um, so the, the Monday morning question around like, if you could wave that realistic magic wand and you know, things have changed next Monday morning, what would it be that changed? But then that question around, what would that do for you? right? How would you feel? What would that do for you? The power of that, going back to the be, do, have model, is that you don't have to wait for that thing to happen to feel that way or to show up the way you want to. And I, I realize that that's probably going against everything you've been taught, but um, like from the outside world, but it's true. If you want to wake up lighthearted, carefree, creative, funny, you know, or just maybe more calm, peaceful, more centered, you can, you can do that. Nothing is keeping you from that. And you don't have to wait for that thing to happen in order to feel that way. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, no nonsense way of thinking based on compassion, love, with strong sense of self. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. These are great. So these characteristics, the specificity is so helpful. So, you know, I've, I have sticky notes everywhere. I don't know if you guys can see them, but um, huge on sticky notes, always have been. And so with my alter ego, um, her name is Katenya, <laughs> and she has this like set of traits that I really admire that, you know, Kate Bush, Lady Gaga, Bjork, um, Alan Watts, like a lot of folks have these traits that I admire. So I just created a list of the traits and started embodying them. And it's really fun and it's a great way to to play, but also to say, you know what? No, I'm in the driver's seat. I'm in the director's seat of my life. I'm not just going to be at the whim of however, you know, the default mode is or shows up. Okay. So that was a lot of talking. I want questions. <laughs> How you doing, everybody? <laughs> Great question, Barbara. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, advice for staying centered in your intentional identity. Stop letting your default mode from creeping in. Totally. So one thing I want to mention is if you, when we, when we are in default mode, don't beat yourself up. Like let's not add salt to the wound here. Um, and that's what sometimes can happen where it's like, God, why am I, why am I being so negative again? I told myself I was going to be more positive. Like idiot, like let's not do that. Um, so let's use self-compassion. First of all, um, when we do show up in ways that we're like, oh, why am I doing this? Uh, please use self-compassion. Uh, you can go to selfcompassion.org. Kristen Neff is the kind of leading scientist right now around self-compassion. And there's a ton of resources on that website, guided meditations, literature, all kinds of great stuff. Um, so the self-compassion piece is helpful. It's a helpful part of the equation. Um, but then in terms of like, staying more, remembering to stay centered and remembering to stay focused on intentional identity and like be present with that. I'm going to say something that probably sounds overly simplistic, but I promise you it's true. I promise you, I'll give you 50 bucks at the end of the month if you do this every day and it doesn't help. Um, and I mean that mindfulness, sitting, sitting our butts down for five to 10 to 15 minutes 
a day. And you can use like calming music if you want, but no guided meditation. I mean, guided meditation is separate. I'm talking about something different. I'm talking about, I call it the awareness practice. The more we can sit with our thoughts and just observe them and be present and notice our thoughts. I know you guys probably hear this everywhere, but it's true. The more you can practice that and dedicate that time, the more you're going to wake up in the moment. And that's really what all of this is about is waking up in the present moment so that we can realize, whoa, I'm on default mode. Okay, let's be intentional. The more mindfulness we can practice, the more we can detach from the river and stand on the banks, the more first nature it becomes to be self-aware enough to be intentional, if that makes sense. So practice waking up. I used to have stickies all over my house that said, wake up. I have one still in my refrigerator downstairs. It just says, wake up. Every time I go to open the fridge, wake up. Oh yeah. What was I just thinking about? Was I here or was I like somewhere in the future or the past? Um, so that would be kind of my top level answer for that, Barbara. Um, Amanda says, I love the way Brene Brown calls out her own internal bullshit or admits that even she can dip into that negative space. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, lifting ourselves out of it, being self-compassionate. Mm -hmm. It's okay to have negative feelings, but you don't have to put out a welcome mat for them. I love that. That's great. Yeah. I, I read another quote the other day that said, we're only as busy as our minds are. And I was like, whoa, that's so true. Because I, I have like a thousand projects going on at any given time. And I was like, ah, <laughs> I can just simplify my mind and I feel a lot lighter. How do I feel about vision boards? I love vision boards. Um, I actually have a whole thing I do on vision boards because I bring in the neuroscience. And I think that that's the part that a lot of, why vision boards kind of get a bad rep <laughs> is that um, there's a misunderstanding of how they, what they do or how they, um, how to best utilize them for creating what we want in our lives. And there's a huge piece around neuroscience that we get to infuse with vision boards that then totally helps us get results way faster than without the visual component. So um, long answer is I love them. Um, and you're all welcome to email me or um, reach out to me in any capacity with follow-up questions or I'm happy to like, I have resources for everything you guys. Like I've said, I've, I've researched this stuff for thousands of hours, tons and tons of years. I have a full program, lots of modules in every program. So. If you have a question about something, I probably have a resource for it. Um, repeat the website. Yeah, selfcompassion.org. It might be self-compassion.org. Um, and Kristen Neff is the, res uh, the researcher. Yeah, oh, thanks, Amelia. Nice, okay, cool. Hey, oh yeah, someone, thank you for putting it in the chat. Perfect. Yeah, all right. Um, questions, questions? Come on, is this landing? Is this making sense? Does this sound like total bananas? Are you willing to try it on? Do you have any questions about how to put this into practice? Um, so yeah, any questions that you have about any of this? Uh, you're welcome to put in the chat, come off, come off camera if you want or um, definitely feel free to email me. My email's in the footer of the, the workbook, so you can reach out that way too. Um, yeah, and if anybody's interested in having guidance or support around any of this or anything else in your life with regard to the emotional components of navigating the pandemic or career related stuff or purpose. Like I said at the beginning of the call, I'm a life career and purpose coach. So all of these domains are my domains of expertise and I would be happy, happy, happy to offer a free uh, session to anybody who would just like to chat more about this or has questions about it that you'd like to talk about one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I'll send Ivy my, um, yeah, I'll send Ivy my free strategy session link. So any of you can book a session that way. Um, and yeah, I'd be happy to be of service in any way that I can to this community. Um, I'm also 
like super creative. So if there were to be a group of you that would like to have some support on an ongoing basis, I would be open to creating something custom for this community. And that's, this isn't something that I offer, I offer to most communities because I do have huge projects going on right now. My business is like, pew. Um, but because I, costumes are so dear to me and what you guys do matters so much. I, I'd love to, you know, be of service in continuation in any way that would be helpful. Cool. All right. Yay. Okay. Been informative. Be practicing. Yeah. Practice, practice. If you guys are, you know, buddies within the community, help each other, stay accountable, gamify it, have fun with it. Yeah, great. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Shannon. Cool. All right, well, I'm here for questions, but uh, if no questions, then we'll, we can go ahead and wrap out. Or if Ivy, you have anything else you wanna speak to, that's cool too. And it's been yeah. a total pleasure. I just yeah. want to thank you so much, Han, and everyone joining us today. And if you guys, I'd be happy to share all the information that Han, Han gives us. And just thank you guys so much and have a, have a blessed day and enjoy the rest of your week. Perfect. Yay. Thanks, everybody. Thanks okay. for being here. All right. <laughs> Bye. Adios.